Hey, it's your local fish keeper, Sabrina. How's everyone been doing? I hope you are well. Today, I want to talk about one of my favorite pufferfish species ever, which are the ambush pufferfish. I know a lot of people refer to them as pet rocks, but there's something about their little gremlin faces that, that I, I just adore them. <laughs> So this video is going to be more of a general overview of ambush puffers. So I won't be focusing on a single specific pufferfish species. So please bear that in mind. If you are planning to get an ambush puffer and you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's begin. So what are ambush puffers? Ambush puffers are puffers that do not actively swim out in the open. They prefer to camouflage and wait for their prey to swim by before catching them. That's why they are often called pet rocks. They don't move much. I would say that during my rescue days, this species is probably the most rehomed puffer species to date. People do get tired and bored of them, especially children, because they're not an active species, they don't swim about much. So yeah, please do bear that in mind. So if you're looking for an active swimming fish, then this one's not it, Chief. <laughs> I'm just trying to save you from the hassle of having to rehome pets. In the beginning, when you first get your ambush puffer, they may be very shy. But of course, this depends on the individual puffer itself, if you get a not-so-shy puffer, then awesome! <laughs> However, most of the time, that is not the case. They are just what we call quote-unquote shy in nature. <laughs> Having said that, they are still puffers and puffers equal aggressive predators. Come to think of it, <laughs> ambush puffers are probably, perhaps, the most notable pufferfish species to actually bite a person's skin off, so please do be careful and yes, they have strong chompers, no doubt about it. Now let's get back to the topic of shy puffers. How do we deal with that? Two things, a good environment and time. Generally speaking, with tank size, I won't do anything less than a 30 gallon tank or a 114 liter tank for a single pufferfish. Despite me calling them pet rocks in the beginning, they would really appreciate the space. Um, they do actually swim and explore about their tank, um, especially when the lights are off. As for filtration, always invest in a good filter for puffers. Puffers are messy eaters. Having the right substrate for this species is very important. I always go for either medium to fine sand substrate. It is important to note that all ambush puffers wallow in sand. Some will do it more than others. For instance, you'll see suvati puffers and potito puffers to bury themselves in sand more as compared to a dragon or hairy pufferfish. But they all appreciate having a sand substrate. Next are hides. You can provide them with something as simple as a pot, something like this, or you can choose to build a cave-like structure using rocks or even decorate the tank in a way where they can camouflage themselves. For example, mahang leaves work great for dragon puffers as they mimic dead dried leaves in the wild. And as for hairy puffers, river rocks are great as they do mimic as mossy rocks in the wild. Speaking of camouflage, let's talk about plants. There seems to always be a debate online on whether you can keep plants with these species. And well, personally to me, yes, but proceed at your own risk. I love planted tanks and I do have plants in almost all of my tanks as shown behind here. So the question now is, do my puffers bite the plant sometimes? And the answer is yes. But in my case, it's not as bad as other people's experiences from what I've heard. I am convinced that some puffers are just out there to get your plants and I can't really do anything about that. Sorry. Since I get this question quite often, let's go through some of the plants that I have in my puffers tank. Let's check out our first planted tank which is lemon pie's tank. Hi there lemon pie, can we see some plants please? He's very shy. Okay, wait, wait a minute. I've spotted our first bite mark. So that hole right there, that is made by yours truly. 
lemon pie. Okay, let's check out the other plants on this side. So first up, we have some Anubias plants. So at the front there, yep. And behind the Anubias plants, we have some crypts growing, as well as uh, plenty of Amazon swords. And I've just potted our next <laughs> second bite mark. So this Anubias plant used to be in Hedwin, the Harry Potter's tank, and that is his bite mark. Speak of the devil, let's look at Hedwin's tank next. Also, Hedwin is hiding right behind there. He is not having it. Sorry, Hedwin, we just want to see some of your plants, please. Yeah, he doesn't care. So, uh, first up, we have Sagittarius Sabulata at the front there. And uh, we have, again, some Crips because I love Crips. And uh, at the back, we have Valisneria plant as well as Crinum calamistratum, the one with the lacy looking uh, leaves and a random Amazon sort there. So that's basically Hedwin's tank. So the last tank that I want to show you belongs to Tomato, the dragon puffer, but she is currently sleeping. So let's try to go through the plants quickly. I know what you're thinking, this tank looks weird. <laughs> but trust me, I had just recently um, rescaped this tank about, I think one week ago. So it's still in an ugly stage, just give it time. I am going to add more plants in the future. But for now, let's just go through the plants that we have currently in the tank. So first up, we have Hygrophila pinatifida growing on the rocks. We have Bulbitis hudiloti. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. We have, um, some moss growing on the driftwood. Uh, it's either Christmas moss or weeping moss, and I actually don't remember. <laughs> uh, we have a hidden tiger lotus at the back there. I love tiger lotus. We also have another crib here. I don't remember the name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have plenty of Sagittarius abulata. Sorry, I just forgot. Uh, Sagittarius abulata growing in the soil, hopefully to carpet the whole tank. Um, over here we have some Anubias hanging for dear life and more Bulbitis. Yeah. You have to give your new puffer time. Moving is stressful for anyone, including puffers. They need time to acclimate to their new surroundings and to begin trusting you. What you can do is to spend time in front of the tank don't always actively engage with them, but instead, read a book or you can be on your phone in front of the tank. Let them see you and let them know that you're not a threat. Please note that for rescue puffers, especially those that came from not so good homes, uh, you may need more time to build their trust, but it is completely doable. Rescue puffers tend to be more on the aggressive side, so please be careful and please be patient with them. I'm going to touch on the topic of tank mates very briefly before we move on to our next topic. Don't do it. These puffers are pissivores. So now, I'm not talking to you puffer breeders and puffer experts out there because y'all are amazing. Keep up the great work. I'm talking specifically to you beginners out there. Please, for God's sake, please only get one ambush puffer per tank no other fish. I'm just trying to save you from witnessing a bloodbath. <laughs> the other day, a good friend told me something very interesting. They said that um, if you are an ambush puffer keeper, you are most probably one of these two things. Either you are a very patient person or you are a very stubborn person. And I personally identify as the latter. <laughs> Ambush puffers are notable to be picky eaters, which is why you have to be very patient or more stubborn than them. I am not a fan of feeding feeder fish to my puffers, but if you are, then I highly recommend to breed your own stock so that you have healthy feeders. Now, let's talk about picky eaters. If your puffer eats straight away, then great. But if they don't, here are some tips. Please note that these tips can only be applied after you've dewormed your puffer and if your puffer is healthy. 
two things, tongs or forceps training and fasting. Use a pair of tongs to feed your puffer. If you have tongs with the red tip at the end, that would be better. So you want to start off with only one type of food first. I recommend either earthworms or dubia roaches. They may not take them immediately and that's okay. Offer them the food every day and if they do not eat them, remove the food from their tank. The idea is to build trust between you and your puffer and an association with tongs and food. Throughout this whole process, do not offer live feeder fish as this will cause your picky puffer to become more picky. They're going to start thinking that, hey, if I don't eat the food that's being fed to me, my owner will feed me live fish, and we don't want that. If they refuse to eat, as long as they're healthy, let them pass. Eventually, they'll get hungry and will eat the food you offer them. If you can get at least two food in their main diet, that's a win for me. So next, what food do I offer them and how often do I feed my puffers? For my ambush puffers, I feed them frozen thought tilapia chunks, um, gut-loaded earthworms or African nightcrawlers, and gut-loaded dubia roaches. The good thing about ambush puffers is that their teeth do not grow as fast as other pufferfish species. So you don't have to worry about always constantly having to feed them crunchy and meaty food. Now, don't get me wrong, species like the Pau turgidus should be fat snails on a regular basis, but we are not going to get into that. Today's video is all about a general overview on ambush puffers. Focus. <laughs> ambush puffers do not need to be fed oysters, clams, cockles, and etc. And please avoid thiamines containing food in their main diet. Once in a while, I do feed my puffers live freshwater crabs or crayfish as treats and for enrichment purposes, but they don't need them in their main diet. So how often do I feed my puffers? For adult puffers, I feed them every two days. So for instance, if I feed them on Monday, I'll skip Tuesday and Wednesday and start feeding them again on Thursday. I feed them until their belly looks slightly distended once or twice per day. But for juvenile or baby puffers, I do feed them every day. Well, I hope this answers most of your questions. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment down below. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more content. And especially, please do comment down below as I would love to hear your thoughts and reach your comments. Until then, have a lovely day and see you next time!